Hello and welcome to another gaming video of mine. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Sword and Fairy 7 on the PC. Now, this is also known as Sword and Fairy Together Forever on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, due to be released on the 4th of August 2022, which means it's just a couple of days away from today. <laughs> when I'm recording this video, it's the 2nd of August. Now, Sword and Fairy 7. Now, this is an action adventure game developed by China Mobile Games and Entertainment Group Limited and Soft Star Technology from Beijing. It is the ninth installment in the Legend of Sword and Fairy video game series. Now, this game has been preceded by the Legend of Sword and Fairy 6, and its story is set years after the events of the entire The Legend of Sword and Fairy series. So it definitely happens to exist in that Sword and Fairy universe. But as far as this game goes, it's a standalone game as far as the story goes. So even if you have not played any of the other Sword and Fairy games from the game series, you will still be able to enjoy this one. Yeah, so don't worry about that aspect. Now, straight off the bat, I'd like to mention that this is a top quality product. It's a true AAA title that deserves a lot of love and attention. Now I'm quite surprised that I haven't seen any marketing around it. There are not a lot of videos. In fact, even if you want to take a look at the walkthroughs, you really have to go into those Reddit conversations, the community forums, etc., to actually you know take a look at those conversations because there's not a lot going for this game in terms of marketing. But it's an excellent role-playing game. And it has the right mix of some Chinese movie-style drama, romance, comedy, magic, action, and adventure. And just like the word fairy in the game title, like sword and fairy, I can comfortably say this is a fairy tale adventure with visuals which look like a life painting with beautiful mountains and forests like you can see on screen right now. It's even got, you know, streams of water flowing, waterfalls, scenic vistas that you can spend loads and loads of time just gazing at the screen. And as far as the game goes, you're playing this character from a third person perspective. So there are different characters that you will come across in the game. And you'll be able to play as not just one, not just this one character that you're seeing on screen, but there are four main characters that you're gonna get to play as. I'm going to talk about that in a short bit. But this game, it has a lot of cutscenes. So if you're not the kind of person who, I mean, if or rather, if you're the kind of person who does not enjoy cutscenes, well, I would say that, you know, you may want to stay away from it because they, there are a lot of cutscenes. But still, I would strong, strongly recommend that you give this game a try because it's, it's unique. It's a game that is very, very different. I mean, I really enjoyed this game in the short span of time that I spent with it. Speaking of short span of time that I spent with it, it's because it's not one of those games where you can spend hundreds and hundreds of hours. Now, if you're just doing the main quest with a few of those side quests, you can complete this game in less than 25 hours. So in terms of the number of hours that you can put in this game, not as many as something like Assassin's Creed, because that is also another action RPG title. but yeah, 25 hours, it's decent enough. And if you actually indulge yourself in those side quests, then you can comfortably get, I would say, anything between 35 to 40 hours as well. I believe so. Now, I personally spent close to 25 hours on this game, and that's to complete some of the side quests and the main quests. But this game, well, hey, if you, take, if you could take a look at the screen, it's a beautiful game. I mean, each of these locations that you will come across in this game, and there are many, they're different worlds, different locations that you'll get to visit. Each of them have their own unique character style and its own life, you could say. So, although the use of the assets, like obviously when you're making a game, you know, the assets like trees and uh, uh, rocks and stones, etc., some of those assets will be reused again in different locations. But I'll tell you what, I mean, Apart from these main assets, everything is different in these different locations. So that's how much the developers have paid attention to making this, this world of Sword and Fairy 7. It's a brilliant game, out and out. Now, when I started playing this game, I started playing this in native 4K. And that's on my Asus 
laptop. I'm going to talk about the configuration, the performance in a short bit as well. But I don't know if you noticed there, but there were serious drops in the frame. So it's not a game that you can play on 4K on um, a laptop with my configuration. So most of the time I found myself playing this game on 1440p. Most of the time, because hey, I'll tell you why most of the time, because there are different options of playing this game. Now, even that bridge, you know, it kind of reminds me of the first Thor movie, I would say, you know, the Bifrost and uh, that, that bridge. I think it looks prettier here, surprisingly, in a game. <laughs> so that's how far technology has come. But hey, this game, like I told you, you know, it has the right mix of drama, romance, and you will come across, you know, these different cutscenes, which um, highlight the relationships between these different main characters in the game. And um, I did not skip any of these cutscenes. Although this was not in English, there is no option of selecting like an English dubbing version of this game. So all the dialogues, they are in Chinese, but uh, there are subtitles that you can follow. And uh, I did not face any challenges, I would say. I mean, I could comfortably follow the story, although I don't understand Chinese. Um, the story was pretty simple, straightforward. Now, like I was saying, you know, I mean, the different locations. So here, if you notice, you've got this beautiful background, this, this, uh, these, these Chinese pagodas and um, uh, these uh, cherry blossom trees, etc. Beautifully designed, you know, I mean, and the texture quality on this game. I was playing this on the PC, so obviously I... I got a very good quality of textures on my PC, especially because even when I was playing on 4K, I was playing with high settings, all right? Now, when I dialed it down to 1440p, I was playing this with high settings still. I did make a few compromises in terms of the settings, so I customized, you know, what I wanted to dial down on, and I'm gonna talk about that when I speak about the performance. But um, the one thing that I did notice in this game is it makes a huge difference when you turn um, turn the HDR on. So with the HDR on, I think the colors felt a little more natural. With the HDR off, obviously, you know, on my television, the screen becomes brighter, but I think the colors were a little more saturated. Yeah, so <laughs> I think this game is best played with the HDR turned on. And um, somehow it, it makes an impact on even the lighting. The lighting somehow looks better as well when I played this with the HDR turned on. Now, like I was saying, you know, these, these beautiful scenic landscapes, as you could see, you know, that tree right in the middle of this, this location, the waterfalls in the background, they all are absolutely stunning. I mean, this is one of the most beautiful games that I've played. And um, I'm coming from, you know, playing games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so you can understand that if I'm comparing this title to games of that standard, now this game stands out. And quite honestly, I, I kind of like the visual style of this game overall. You know, I mean, this is a fantasy setting at the end of the day. And uh, I really enjoy the world that they have created. Even this, this, this demon realm, this heaven demons realm, look at the reflections on the screen. And I'm playing this on an AMD machine. I don't even have um, optimum ray tracing, I would say. And again, I'm gonna talk about this towards the end while I speak about the performance. But look at those reflections on the surface. I mean, it's mind boggling. It is a gorgeous game. And the level design, those shards of glasses that are floating in the air, they kind of capture what's in the background. I don't know if you have noticed this, but look at those shards of glasses. I mean, that's how much the developers have thought about this while creating this game. Now, there is also a camera mode in this game as well, uh, because hey, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, it's it's these scenic landscapes you could say that you're gonna come across, whether it's indoor, outdoor areas, all of them they've been meticulously designed. Like for instance, you know, this area and every area that I've shown you so far, you let me know in the comment section whether they feel different or not. So this area looks quite different to the ones that I had shown. In fact. Even the uh, color palette, it, it completely changes, you know, going from one area to another. So here, this this scene, this area, this location, it kind of reminded me of those uh, Chinese paintings that I grew up watching, you know, because if you don't know, I 
uh, do happen to be half Chinese, like my mom's Chinese, my wife's Chinese. So, you know, Chinese families, that's that's what I've been around from, you know, I mean, from childhood. And uh, you get these Chinese paintings, you know, in these Chinese homes. Uh, it kind of reminded me of that. So beautiful scenic landscapes that you will get to uh, view. And uh, yeah, I mean, what more can I say? In fact, um, to further expand on the beauty of these uh, scenic landscapes, what they've also done is they have thrown in a camera option. So if you're not moving around, if you're not walking around in this third person perspective, well, I can say that you even have this uh, camera option that you can take advantage of. So you can just play around with it, the various scenic locations as per your choice. And um, while you're doing that, there's some beautiful Asian music running in the background. Yeah, I mean, just take a look at the scene, the, the mountains in the background, the pink cherry blossoms, the trees, the waterfalls, again, you know, I mean, it's so beautiful. And even the characters are beautifully designed, you know. So, I mean, out and out, I don't, again, need to sound like a broken record, but hey, <laughs> this game is beautiful. And this, by the way, is 1440p. Um, so previously I was playing on 4K, but later on I did realize there is a small FPS counter on top of my screen as well. I don't know if you'll be able to notice that. But uh, when I switched over to 1440p, I was getting the high 40s and 50s, even 60s in some cases. And this is what I was talking about, you know, the, the camera option. So you can just take a look at these scenic vistas, these landscapes. Um, you can zoom in, you can zoom out slowly, steadily, and just take in the views, enjoy the views while that music is playing in the background. And speaking of music, this game's musical score it's definitely one of the strongest points of the game. Now, the score is full of Asian melodies and instruments, which take you to the eastern lands while you're drooling on these scenic locations, right? And I would highly recommend just listening to its music or downloading the game's soundtrack. It's really that good, folks. And it's not just the music that is good in the game, but this game has all the right ingredients to make it a really strong offering in the action RPG genre. Now, it does follow the structure of any Western RPG that we can think of, like the Assassin's Creed franchisee, or even The Witcher. Heck, they even have a mini card game like the Gwent included in the game. Now, in case you're wondering, I haven't spoken about the uh, game's action at all. Well, you'll be happy to know that it's quite good. The fighting dynamic, it's quite good. You can use various spirit beasts in the game, different weapons and styles and special moves, and you can even switch between characters while fighting to use the strengths of each character to overcome those challenging battles, especially the boss fights, and I played this game on the easy mode as always, but I must tell you that some of the bosses can get quite tough even in the story mode, uh, in the easy mode, I'm sorry, unless you upgrade your equipment and moves. So you may end up doing some of those side quests in order to upgrade. Now, speaking of those side quests, now this is like any other RPG, you know? I mean, the structure is like any other Western RPG, like I said. So like any of those other RPGs that you may have played, you have your main quest, your side quest, you go on these side quests to gain extra coins, extra abilities, and also to be able to upgrade your equipment. Now there isn't a strong focus on upgrading here, especially in the beginning, the first half of the game, there is not the strong focus on upgrades. But you will need those upgrades, you will need to upgrade mid-game onwards, for sure, trust me when I say that, yeah? Now I know that the title of this game says Sword and Fairy 7, but like I said, you know, this is a standalone game. You don't need to play any of those previous games. And um, this game has some of the most loving characters, main characters that I've actually come across. Now, the main characters, there's um, this female protagonist of the game. Uh, her name is Yu Chuengshu. And then there is a male protagonist as well, Xu Wu. Uh, so, they are the main characters in the game. Apart from that, you know, you have um, other characters like uh, Bai Mo Tring, there's uh, Sangyo as well, and there are some supporting characters as well like Zhechu. So even the supporting characters, you know, they lend a lot of weight to the overall story. And they're not just there to fill screen space. Now, all these characters, they've been designed with a lot of attention, a lot of love, a lot of care, and it shows. 
I'd especially like to mention the hair and the cloth physics. Well, it's one of the best that I've seen in a game. Plus, even the character movement and the animations are all top-notch. I don't think um, it uses any motion capture when it comes to the facial animation, so it may seem a little plasticky, but it kind of adds to the fairy tale live motion anime vibes. Yeah, and the overall storytelling, it's on point. It does not wander to different places, and honestly, this has been one of the most satisfying story experiences I've had in a very long time in an RPG. It's a simple tale, which has been told many, many times before, but their art direction, their style, their writing elevates the overall experience. Now, performance-wise, finally, let's speak about that while I conclude this game. Now, this game was built using the Unreal Engine 4, and it's a demanding game. I've played this on my ASUS Rogue Strix G15 Advantage Edition from 2021 with the AMD Ryzen 9 15900HX mobile processor, the RX 6800M 12GB GDDR6 graphic card, and 16GB of RAM. And this game could obviously not be played in native 4K because there were massive frame drops. But if you dial the resolution down to 1440p, it's surprisingly very playable on this AMD machine of mine. Now, there are some heavy dips, especially in those in-game cutscenes, where you could have the frame drops or frame dropping to even 15 to 20 FPS. Yeah, that bad. But there are very few cutscenes where I saw that the system was brought to almost an overall standstill, you could say. It's very much playable in 1440p with high settings provided you cut down on the shadows and the volumetric fog. So I believe even Digital Foundry's uh, tech analysis of this game tells you the same as to how you can improve the performance by just cutting down on that volumetric fog and the shadows. If not, it's going to be pretty taxing on your system and the performance will not be as good. The other option to play this would be using lossless scaling going from 1080p to my native 4K display using lossless scaling. And on that, I had a solid 60 FPS without any issues. Even those heavy cutscenes would drop only to the high 40s, like 45 to 48 FPS, and it's quite enjoyable in this mode. And as far as ray tracing goes, I can't really comment on it since I'm using an AMD machine, but the reflections on the surfaces, the water surfaces, they look quite good to me overall. Now, this is not a technical analysis, so just sharing my personal experiences here. And overall, I will highly recommend this game, you know, I mean, this is a very enjoyable game and I suggest that you play this. I still strongly recommend that you play this game. And if you haven't checked this out, you can even check it out on PS4 and PS5 because it's um, just a couple of days away. Now, with that said, it's a wrap for this one. And um, I'll see you lovely folks in my next video. <laughs> Until that time, I'll say, hey, happy gaming and um, stay safe. Take care of yourselves and um, do check out Sword and Fairy 7 on the PC and Sword and Fairy together forever on your PlayStation consoles. Now this is me signing out. I'll see you lovely folks in the next one guys. God bless you all.